No, I had a co-writer, best friend of mine, Alphonse Kettner. I just write from the heart. Bobby Caldwell. It was the 1978 smash single, What You Won't Do For Love, that served as the springboard for his prodigious career, which spanned multiple decades and musical subgenres. In the year 2008, Bobby Caldwell, he moved fluidly between musical styles, delving into R&B, reggae, smooth jazz, soft rock, and even some great American songbook standards in the process of creating his music. Before continuing to view more videos, make sure you have subscribed to our channel and click the bell symbol to receive notifications whenever we upload new content. Bobby Caldwell, a singer and songwriter whose debut album, What You Won't Do For Love, helped propel him to double platinum status in 1978 and was later covered by chart toppers such as Boys Eye Men and Michael Bolton, passed away on Tuesday at his home in Great Meadows, New Jersey. What You Won't Do For Love was a subductive R&B hit that was released in 1978. He was died at age of 71. According to a post made on Twitter by his wife, Mary Caldwell, the cause of death was long-term difficulties brought on by a toxic reaction to a class of antibiotics known as fluoroquinolones. Mr. Caldwell's career spanned four decades, during which he experimented with a wide variety of musical styles, including R and B reggae, soft rock, and smooth jazz, in addition to performing classics from the Great American Songbook. He has released over a dozen albums under his own name as a solo artist. He was best known for being a silky voice master of so-called blue-eyed soul, despite the fact that his skills as an old-school crooner, not to mention his trademark fedora, were convincing enough to land him a gig as Frank Sinatra in a Las Vegas review called The Rat Pack Is Back in the 1990s. However, he was best known for his role as Frank Sinatra. Hashtag in an interview with Richmond Magazine from 2019, he described a day when he was riding in an elevator and a man said to him, Thanks a lot, Bobby. I just lost a bet. It would appear that he placed a significant wager that I was black, but he was incorrect. In addition to that, he was a well-renowned songwriter. A number of artists, including Chicago, Bo Skaggs, Neil Diamond, and Al Jarreau, have made recordings of his tunes. The song, The Next Time I Fall, which he co-wrote with Paul Gordon, was recorded by Peter Cetera and Amy Grant and became a smash in 1986, reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. In the year 2020, Billboard magazine featured the song on a list of the top 25 love songs of all time. Robert Hunter Caldwell was born in Manhattan on August 15, 1951. However, he spent the majority of his childhood in Miami. His birthday is August 15. His parents, Bob and Carolyn Caldwell, were artists who hosted two early television variety shows, namely 42nd Street Review in New York and Supper Time in Pittsburgh. Prior to relocating the family to Miami, both shows may be found in New York and Pittsburgh, respectively. In a recent video interview, he described himself as having been a show business baby. By the time he was 17, he was already performing and writing his own material. Soon after, he relocated to Las Vegas, where he joined a band called Katmandu and began performing. In 1971, the band had an album under their name. In the early 1970s, he was given a moment in the limelight when Little Richard hired him on as a rhythm guitarist for the band. He used the subsequent years to try to establish a name for himself by performing in bars and recording demos of his music. With the success of What You Won't Do For Love, he was finally able to get a taste of what it was like to be a celebrity in his own right. Its success continued throughout the beginning of the 1980s with albums such as Cat in the Hat 1980 and Carry On 1982. Even though his popularity began to decline in the later part of the 1980s, he continued to record and perform for many years. His album Cool Uncle, which he created with the well-known R&B producer Jack Splash and released in 2015, marked the beginning of his successful comeback. The album featured Denise Williams, CeeLo Green, and Jesse Ware as special guests, 
and it soared to the top of the current jazz list on the Billboard website. Rolling Stone referred to the album as 2015's smartest retro soul comeback in their review of the project. There was a delay in the availability of complete information regarding survivors. Mr. Caldwell's career received a further unexpected boost because to the development of hip-hop, Notorious Big, Tupac Shaker, and Common were all known to sample his tunes over their career. A crossover of this kind could have seemed improbable to some people, but not to Mr. Caldwell. In an interview that took place in 2005 with NPR, he stated, our company is continuously in a state of upheaval. He went on to say that R&B radio is not what it was back in the days when he was starting out, but that rappers were expanding out into what he called adult urban, which is more of the R&B that you and I cut our teeth on. He noted that because to the fact that it is always changing, you kind of have to continuously reinventing yourself. Thanks for watching my video. Subscribe for more celebrity news.